plus 3 is a y-intercept of 3 and a slope of negative 2. And you put a 1 in there, and it's 1. Put a 1 in here, and it's 1. So it would be 1 there as well. So it's going to be this guy here. Right? And then it's x squared from there on, so it's going to be a parabola up here. So even though this may not be uh, differentiable at a certain point, we can still find the derivative of it, f prime of x. We can still find the derivative of these things individually. Like I can find the slope of this line and the slope of this thing, right? Now it's, it's going to be a little different because I'm splitting it. So I'm actually going to split my derivative as well. I can't find the derivative as a whole because it's got a point. It's got a cusp right here. So the derivative of the first one is, bring down your 1, that's negative 2, x to the 0, so the x to the 0 goes away. So it's negative 2, derivative of 3 is 0, and that's when x is less than 1. And isn't that the case? Is the slope of the line when x is less than 1, negative 2? From here to here, down 2 over 1. That's the slope of this line. Well, fantastic. What about this one? The derivative of x squared is drop your power, subtract 1 from your power, so that's 2x to the first power, but we don't need that. And that's going to be where x is greater than 1. Now, here's the difference between, doing, between being able to do a derivative and not being able to do a derivative. Do you see this equal to 1? I am taking that out. So I'd like you to make a little note to yourself here. Take out the cusp. Take out the cusp. I'm going to take this point where it's not differentiable, and I'm just going to get rid of it. And I'm going to say to the left of that point, it's negative 2. To the right of that point, it's 2x. I'm going to take out that cusp. That is extremely important because if you say that this is x is greater than or equal to 1, you've just invalidated this problem because you have included the cusp. And there's no kind of cusp that we want to include. So there's your derivative. So it's a pretty simple idea. Take out the point that's not differentiable and then just write it out. All right? Example number four, the absolute value of x. Okay, here's how you're going to operate these. First and foremost, I'm going to turn this into a piecewise function. If you think about the absolute value of x, where's the dividing line here? Because the absolute value of x, if you remember, you can rewrite this. Um, zero is going to be the dividing line, right? It's going to be negative x when x is less than zero, less than or equal to. It doesn't really matter where the equal to goes here because it's going to get, be gotten rid of in a second. And then it's x when x is greater than zero. Think about a piecewise function. If it's the absolute value of x that tells you your slope is 1, so it's going to be 1 over 1 over here, then once you hit the x-axis, it bounces back up, right? So it's negative x, this guy here, negative x when it's left of 0. Easiest way you can find that is actually um, setting the inside equal to 0 and solving, and that'll tell you where the division happens, right? If you set the inside to 0, set y to 0 and solve, that'll tell you where your division happens. So let's differentiate f prime of x, derivative of negative x is negative 1, derivative of x is 1, and now put where it happens. The slope is positive or is a negative 1 here when x is less than 0. Remember, I'm not going to put the equal sign because I'm ignoring the fact that it's equal. And it, the slope is positive 1 when x is greater than 0. So again, if you set the inside to 0, then it'll tell you where your division happens. For example, on number 5, 
set the inside to zero. Okay, so move your one over and you'll have two x is negative one, divide by two, you got x is negative one half. That tells you that your division, where this, where the, the cusp is at, is at negative one half. There's your cusp. So to give you an idea of what this looks like, uh, my division lines are going to be when x is less than negative one half. We'll go ahead and say less than or equal to. Again, it doesn't matter where I put the equal to. I could put it down on the bottom if I wanted to. X is greater than, oops, not equal to because it only goes in one spot, is greater than negative one half. So when it is less to the left of, it's going to be a negative 2x plus 1. And when it's greater than, it's going to be a positive 2x plus 1. And again, think about the graph of the piecewise function. Okay, the graph of the piecewise looks something like this. Here's negative one half, right? And it never dips below the x-axis because it's all inside the absolute value. So it's going to be a positive uh, two over one, so bam. And it's going to be a negative two over one, so bam. All right, so there's the graph. Now let's find the derivata. F prime of x. Again, see how, see how these are done the same way as our piecewise up at the top? Same thing. And I can go ahead and say it's going to be when x is less than one, negative 1 half and when x is greater than negative 1 half. So when it's less than, let's look at this one, this will be a negative 2x minus 1. What's the slope of negative 2x minus 1? It's just going to be a negative 2, isn't it? What's the slope of 2x plus 1? Well, that's going to be a positive 2. So saying the slope of the line to the left is negative 2. The slope of the line to the right is positive 2. So if, if you think about it in terms of slope, graph it out and see if it makes sense. I mean, if you got like a 2x squared plus 4, that's obviously not the derivative of this guy because it's a line, right? Just graph it out. See if it makes sense, okay? Now, there's going to be a couple of times that, that these trig functions and these... Uh, what he calms, piecewise is and absolute values. They they do get a bit tricky at times, but they they're nowhere near impossible. Just remember that once you have established what your derivative is, as far as the AP test goes on a free response question, you can stop. But if it's a multiple choice question, you will need to know how you can simplify it farther. Okay. Uh, apart from that, that's really all I have. Um, and there's a couple of examples that I will go over in class that I think have just awesome points to be made. And apart from that, adios and bio con dios.